Thank you very much. And this is a follow-up to a previous parliamentary question, and I'm asking if you're satisfied that local authorities are enforcing the Control of Horses Act adequately, your views on the need for horse wardens with a particular focus on problem areas for horse abuse, um, and your views on this. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, officials from my department recently met with members of the Local Authority Control of Horses Working Group to discuss this matter. There is a general consensus that the current approach continues to reduce problems regarding wandering horses despite the persistence of a small number of irresponsible horse owners. Overall, the Control of Horses Act 1996, which provides powers to local authorities to deal with stray and abandoned horses, has worked well over the past 20 or so years. The number of horses being seized nationally continues to decline from 4,923 in 2014 to 1,603 in 2017 and 806 to date in 2018. This reduction is reflective of a number of factors, including initiatives being progressed by my department in the animal welfare area, as well as active enforcement of the Animal Health and Welfare Act 2013 and the EU equine identification regulations. In tandem with the work of the local authorities under the Control of Horses Act, officials of my department have been actively involved in a number of horse seizures and have initiated prosecutions under the Animal Health and Welfare Act. Horse exports have increased substantially in recent years, helping to bring about a much greater balance between supply and demand. In addition, animal welfare charities have been rehoming an increased number of horses abroad. The increased emphasis on rehoming of horses is being assisted greatly through my department's funding to animal welfare organisations. 2.56 million euros has been paid to 111 organisations to assist their work in animal welfare in 2018. A number of these organisations are actively involved in rescuing and rehoming neglected horses. My department also provided, provides funding to local authorities to support the development of urban traveller horse projects in their respective areas. To date, funding of over €1 million Euros has been drawn down across several local authorities, including contributions of €534,000 to South Dublin towards the development of the Clondalkin Equine Club. <coughs> funding has also been provided for projects and actions in Kildare, Kilkenny, Longford, Limerick, Leitrim, Cork, Meath, Offaly and Wicklow. These projects focus on education and they create awareness on compliance with animal welfare regulations, thereby contributing to the reduction in the numbers of straying horses. My department continues to stress that it is the responsibility of individuals to ensure the welfare of horses in their ownership and or their care and to ensure that when they no longer have a need for the animal that they are disposed of in an appropriate and responsible way. The matter of employing horse wardens is an issue for local authorities themselves to consider. Local authorities are legally entitled to appoint authorised officers under the Control of Horses Act and the Animal, welfare, he, Animal Health and Welfare Act. In their consideration of the need for additional authorised officers, account would no doubt be taken on the overall improvements that have taken place in respect of the stray horses issue in recent years, the particular circumstances in their local area, and indeed the excellent work of animal welfare charities. Thank you, Minister. Deputy. Uh, thank you, Minister. That sounds very well on paper, but the reality is different. And we have appalling cases of animal abuse and horse abuse. And last Thursday, a number of animal welfare groups came together outside the Doyle under the banner, for, banner of Action for Animal Welfare. And we had case after case of abuse that, that they know about. And where they are picking up the, they're picking up the pieces because the, the Animal Welfare Act is not being adequately enforced. For example, the local authorities who are funded by the government, they're not, I mean, in spite of what you say, they're not enforcing the Control of Horses Act. They just impound and they kill animals or they remove the dead animals. Now, in the past 11 months, for example, Tipperary County Council spent €155,800 on removing dead horses. Now, we have dog wardens, we have litter wardens. So could your department not give the lead with the local authorities, even a pilot scheme, we know where the black spots are, that they can work with these owners before the abuse starts. And they can work on things like um, the care of animals, issues like worming and foot care. Also, that the horses, ponies, donkeys, that they're microchipped, they're registered, and they're kept in proper equine registered properties with equine space. You, that this warden would have a lorry that can impound on the spot with guard of protection if that is necessary, because we know it has been in places. So that we don't have starving animals with appalling illnesses that we hear about every day. Thank you, Deputy, and I appreciate um, your interest in this area, consistent interest, and I, I also appreciate the uh, efforts made collaboratively by my own department, local authorities, charitable bodies. Um, I, I think the graph is going in the right direction. 
That being said, uh, we, we are all, I think, shamed by the the, the incidents of these, and, and they, they get a lot of traction, particularly on social media. And it, sometimes it, it, it distorts the endeavour that's underway and the very good work being done by all of the aforementioned in terms of trying to address this problem. And the stats clearly show, uh, though you, ca you can't hide behind the stats when you're confronted by the graphic images that we see, and you refer to Tipperary uh, Local Authority. Um, the issue of, of, of local authorities appointing wardens is an issue for themselves. It's not an issue for the department. But where there are specific problems, that's uh, obviously a response that they may consider appropriate. But it is important that I think we all continue to, to collaborate uh, together. I think we are making great progress. I think we have the legislative framework there now. We've had high profile prosecutions. That's important. The I, in fact, I often consider that the prosecutions are in, in a way a reflection of the ultimate failure. We need Am to work with, with a lot more stick, and uh, or a lot less stick perhaps, and more carrot, final, to final people, but we need to retain the stick as well. Final supplementary. Yeah. Okay, I'll just make a couple of points. One is, can you have that conversation with local authorities on the need for a horse warden, which could preempt some of the problems that we are seeing? That would be the first point. Second point I make, that we have hundreds of horses in the Dublin County, City, Dublin City Council area. Each should have a chip and a passport, and those in the control areas should have a licence. Dublin City Council only issued 15 licences, and I think that needs to be looked at. And I acknowledge the work of the Clondalkin Equine Centre. Thirdly, when we do have a fodder crisis, is there a contingency plan for the animal welfare groups who are trying to feed animals who, are now, who have been suffering from neglect? And could you cl clarify for me, under the Horse Racing Act, if a horse is found to have been doped, the horse is banned. Now, I'm sure it's something would happen to the owner, but what happens to that horse? Isn't that another issue that, that we have to look at? And finally, you know, if you can't go along with the horse warden idea, what is the alternative? You say it's working, but we have those graphic examples where it's not working. And I do think a pilot scheme in some of the black spots could really could add to what you're doing and could really make a difference. Uh, one minute. Th that engagement is ongoing, and as I said at the opening line, of my, we, we had recent consultation with local authorities, but it's not for us to instruct local authorities to re recruit wardens. That's uh, under the control of Horses Act. That's something that they may do themselves, and I appreciate, as a former member of local authority, there are many competing demands on, on, on their uh, resources, but uh, some have. Uh, many haven't, uh, but it's not something that we can instruct. But there is ongoing engagement regarding um, this issue and where there may be considered to be hotspots. Um, I, I think education has a critical role to play, and I think things like the Clondalk and Equine project was a really important uh, project in that context because it gave an opportunity to recognise the, the culture around the urban horse. Um, I mean, we, we do celebrate in, in, in Irish uh, society the, har the position of the horse, race, horse racing, sport horses, etc. But the urban horse is as much a part of that cultural uh, story as any other. And facilities like that, uh, you know, Clondalkin facility, are really important in, in recognising and valuing that, but also showcasing how be best treatment and practice should be delivered. And to all those involved in that, you know, that's really important. I think that it, it is important that the collaborative endeavour continues, and certainly my department will continue to work with all of the voluntary organisations who do tremendous work in that area. But I don't think we should lose sight of, and I'll conclude on this, I don't think we should lose sight of the fact that we are in a far, far better position now than we were. But, you know, one case is one case too many.